Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. So in this one, what we're going to do is we're just going to process our form in our store method right here. Okay. So we obviously finished up with our form right here. Now there's a couple of things I just wanted to show you that I've updated that you can do yourself. All right. So what I've done is I've removed, changed the name field. Okay. So I removed the ID from that name and I moved it down to where the payment details i just put a name on card field right there okay then i put it the id field with the card holder name i put it like this then i just check for authenticated user if that is available then we question mark if it's not available then we use the card holder name like that okay then we leave the card details everything else is the same okay and the next thing i did in the line one address, what I've done is the, I added the value because not we had done this before. Just add the authenticated user. We're just going to check for the line one method inside our user model. And then just do that same for basically line two, line for the city, for the state, and for the country and the postal code as well. Right? Call them with the methods. Right? And inside your user model, I've added those fields to be fillable. Okay, mess assigned. Um, I didn't want the video to be too long because it's actually getting a little bit long. That's why I'm actually just showing you it like this instead of having to type it myself. All right, so that we don't waste anyone else's time. Okay. Now I add the mess fillable fields like this. Okay. And then I created methods for those fillable fields above line one like this line two, the city, the state, and the country, and the postal code. Now, these methods right here is the ones that I'm referring to right here. As you can see, line two, line one, and basically the city like this, and the state, but the rest. Right. Now, the reason I just wanted to show you, because someone might be new and said, why don't add the blade syntax like that, right? The reason for that is because when we're passing the value as a variable to our JET input blade component. Okay. So that's why we don't add the blade syntax right there. Okay. So that's it. So let's process this form. So let me just show you how it looks like now. All right. So this is basically how the form looks. We've got our name, email, and all the data is coming from the database. I've already filled in these fields. So as you can see, the street, unit, city, state, country, and the postal code. As you can see, the name on card right there is basically that name. But the reason for this is just a better user experience because normally when a user sign up, they might not use their real name. They might just use a synonym or whatever the case may be that they name they want to use, right? So this name will normally not correspond with the name on the card, okay? So that's why I put the name on a card right there and the details right here. And this is the name that we're going to use when we process the card information right here. Okay, quite important. All right, so next thing, let's process this form basically in our store method. All right, so the first thing that we need is we need to get the user and we're gonna get the user and we're gonna do the request user like this. All right, the next thing that we need is the payment method, payment method. Right, and we're going to equal that to request input, and we're going to add basically the payment method like this. Right, so let me just close that off. Right now, this payment method, that input field, is basically coming from here. The payment, we've got a hidden input field. Now, this part right here is going to be filled with JavaScript, the value right there. Since there's no value, but we're going to assign the value. Uh, basically, when we get the result from Stripe, and then we add, you see, we're going to get that element by ID, that payment method, then put that payment method value with the result, sub, uh, set up intent, payment method, and then we submit the form. Okay, so that's where they're coming from. The next thing that we want to do is we want to update this user. Update. All right. So we want to update the user with the basically the billing details. All right. So in this case, let me just type them all out. It will be. Uh, let me just do the first one. So line one. 
right? And that is going to be the request that we got from basically our input. So that will be line one, like this. Okay, so let me do the rest. I'll see you after this. Right, so as you can see, we got our request details right there. This. I'm just putting it like this so you guys can easily see it. So we get the line one, we get the line two, we get the city, the state, the country, and the postal code. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is basically create a new subscription. So, but before we do that, we need to actually get the plan. So let's just put in the plan. Just make sure we import that model from the top. So let's just do this. The plan, as you can see, the class is already imported, so all good. So the plan, we're just going to get where, basically, the Stripe name is equal to our request plan. Right, and then we're just going to get the first one. All right, so just make sure you import that at the top. So if someone might know where we get the Stripe name from, let's open up our plan model. So in our plan model, we add the Stripe name, the, basically the name, slug, Stripe name, Stripe ID, price, and abbreviation. So let's open our plan cedar. Table cedar. This one right here. All right. So now, as you can see, we've got our Stripe name right there, and we've got a Stripe name right here. Okay, so that's where they're coming from. So all right, so now we've got our plan. So now we need to create a new subscription from that user. Okay, so user, new subscription. Right, and then inside here, we actually want to add the plan that we just received. We're gonna get the Stripe name, Stripe name, and this plan, basically the Stripe ID. Stripe ID. All right, and then from there, we're just going to create all the create method on it, and we just want to add the payment method like this. All right, so let me just open the user model quickly. So this one right here, let's go to our user model. So if anyone wants to know where that is coming from, so in our Buddable Manage Subscriptions, you will see we got a new subscription. So this is the field that we, this is the method we're calling on here. Then inside that method, it's going to call basically the name and the price, right? Just like this, okay? The name and the price. Let's go back there. You see the name and the price because the Stripe ID is basically got the price ID for Stripe, okay? So after that, when we finish creating the subscription for the user, we basically want to return, redirect to a route, and the route that we're going to create is going to call billing. We haven't created this route yet. So with a success message. And we can just say, you can say anything you want in here. I'm just going to say, thank you for subscribing. All right. Just like that. All right. So that is basically what we're going to do. So let me just explain this. We're going to get the user. Basically, this is the authenticated user. And then we're going to get the payment method. This payment method is basically the input field that we get right here. I'm just explaining it over again. Right here. Then after that, we submit that. We Basically, we get that plan input field. And we submit it with the value when we get it back from Stripe. We put it in there. Okay, so we use that payment method as a payment method right here. Then we get the plan, the right plan from the request. And the request is basically the plan right, where is it? It's a hidden field, the plan right here. Okay. Then we assign the user with which plan and which price. Okay, then we create a new subscription. And then we redirect the user right there. All right, so there's obviously, let's quickly create this uh, billing controller and a route for billing so that once the user is finished, they will actually go to that, basically that route. Okay, so let's open our terminal. All right, so let's quickly create it. So PHP artisan make, 
controller and we're going to create a dashboard folder okay and inside that we're just going to do a billing controller so from here we will deal with basically the invoices and all that kind of stuff all right so let's do that all right so let's open up that controller so app acp controllers dashboard billing controller all right so what we want to do here is we just want to return an index let's return basically a view now the view will be in dashboard dot billing. I'm going to create a folder called billing and inside the billing we're just going to create a folder called index. All right, so let's quickly create this right there. So resources views. Let's create a new folder and we're going to call this one dashboard. Let's create a new folder inside that folder called billing. And inside that, we're just going to create a new file called index.blade.php. Right? This one right here. Okay, so what I want to do, let's copy basically, let's see which one. Copy the dashboard, that one right there, just copy that. Okay. Then paste it inside the billing. And we're just going to call this billing billing like this and I'm just going to put an h2 heading and just say this is the billing file just like that or you can put anything you want in there right just that dashboard to make it easy for us just copy that and paste it basically inside your dashboard billing.index that right there and just change the billing to be the billing right so this was dashboard, just change it to billing. The text gray is not going to work for me, just make it text white. Right, now the thing is, in order for us, we need to actually receive um, that success message, okay? So we need to receive that success message. Let's go to our app right here. Now, as you can see, we've got the banner, that's all good, but I'm not going to use the banner. I'm going to use... Right, we've got our alerts main right here. So that's all good. So in our layouts, everything is work, working okay. So we've got our success message. So we'll show this. And for if you're using the template, right, that's what we have. All right, we've got a if the session has success, we add some styling for with Alpine.js. And if you have an error, it's displaying this right here. Okay. But we actually don't need the banner. So let's just delete that. Okay, so let's test it out. So let's create a payment and see if we actually get to this part right here. All right, so let's go and test it out. All right, so I've got a couple of test cards. I will leave a link in the description. Some of the test cards, and this is done by Ray, or Rai, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but thank you. Um, basically, this, you can have actually an update so that you can use and test all the different cards on your application. But I'm going to use the 42421. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description for this. Okay. So I'm just going to add the card information right here. The 4242. I'm just going to add any month. And you can add any date you want, but just make sure the expiry date is the right date. Okay. So in this case, let's just set it for next for next year. And then we add just zeros at the end. And let's see if we can actually get to that billing part. Let's put a pay now. Right, the payment is being processed. I would like to have an indicator right here or disable the button if that payment is being processed. Round billing notified. All right, we haven't created the route yet, so let's quickly do that. Right, so let's quickly do that. Um, let's just create it on top right here. Um, I'm going to add a route group. Let's just copy this and just paste it above here. And we're going to add a prefix of dashboard. Let's do this. Dashboard. No. Let's just add, not as. Let's just do a dashboard. Leave the as. Right, we add the prefix. 
of only dashboard right and then we just let's delete the one this one right here all right and this one is going to basically go to the billing and right this one will be billing billing controller class and it will go to the index method and this will basically just be billing like that right now our route is created now i think it created the subscription because we actually went to the billing uh, controller part so we actually went through all of this and then we created the subscription and we actually got to this part right here but this route wasn't created yet so it means it was a success okay so let's just check in stripe in the dashboard if we actually have a subscription and in the database to see if we actually create a subscription okay all right so if we go to the stripe we're going to go to subscriptions let's see if we created a subscription i've already tested it out so we got actually a subscription right there uh, let's go a bit forward as you can see we created the subscription right here so all good so we got our subscription right here so let's go to stripe and actually see uh, there's another thing that i want to check let's go to the users actually we've got our comments let's go to the user and let's go to i think john doe and if we have a look right here you will see we got a street unit and all the kind of information in here so all good stuff all right so as you can see we've got john example we've got a monthly plan and we actually as you can see we subscribe right there ignore this one i've already created that a couple of hours ago so it's all good right here so this is the recent one so we actually create a subscription so all good now the next thing that i want to show you okay so we're obviously going to be dealing with now as you can see the billing address let's just show more as you can see the billing details right there is not filled in but the user got a billing address okay so i want to let this if the user update the details let's say they change the details or update them because as a user go on they might want to change the address or they moved or anything like that as soon as that is done we want to update stripe accordingly so if the user changed the address it needs to update automatically right here and we're going to do that in the next one so i'll see you guys there so if you like the video please guys give it a like and i'll see you in the next one adios